Hey everyone, it's Paul with Reporting Live from my sofa. I hope y'all are having a wonderful day because I am. It is morning time. I am sitting here with my coffee once again going over this Tim Jones Jr. saga. And I want to go over it with you. So, that being said, let's take a quick coffee break and then go on to today's topic. So, as you, you already know from the title of the video... I don't even know what I'm going to title this video at this point, but it's going to have something to do with the testimony uh, of the radiologist and one of the psychiatrists. And what I find fascinating, there's lots I find fascinating about this testimony, um, but I'm not going to get into the sciencey part of it. Uh, I am not a scientist. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a doctor. I'm not any of those things. So I'm not going to even try and talk like I know those words and stuff like that. Um, I'm just going to kind of speak to some thoughts that I have about it. So, and first of all, the radiologist who gets up there and talks about, and we can clearly see, you know, this brain injury to his front um, part of his head. And, you know, the hemorrhages he talks about, and he uses this comparison, and I wrote it down here. He says he compares boxers in a study done with them, and I think it was like out of a hundred of them, none of them showed a hemorrhage like what Tim Jones has. Um, and he says that the part of the brain that connects the left and right is damaged, and essentially he starts going into it and he's like giving all of these like, you know, trigger warnings, you know, uh, da, 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 you know, allegedly. And, you know, essentially the way I took it is he's saying the way his brain looks is very similar to what we see in schizophrenic patients. But you cannot diagnose schizophrenia from an MRI. And, you know, so he's giving all this like, you know, look, there's, you know, the positive correlation and this, that and the other. And so when the state gets up there, and essentially, and this is what always happens with paid-for testimony, and in my opinion, I think paid-for testimony is just, you know, you can't trust it because it's paid for. Even, and unfortunately, and I'm not trying to say, oh, it's, you know, they're lying or this other. I mean, I think sometimes they, they can be telling the truth, but because there's large sums of money attached to it, you always just have to wonder the motivations. And, you know, a good example, not to flip back onto, uh, as I always do, the staircase trial. Uh, I cannot remember his name, but he worked for the defense and he was the blood splatter person and world renowned. I mean, t grade A person. And he got up there and still to this day says it was a fall down the stairs. But because who knows what money they paid him, it's like, mm, did, you, did you really fall down those stairs? Or, you know, do you need to pay for braces? Um, yeah, I don't know. So, same thing goes with this. So, when the state gets up there and starts kind of peeling things apart, because the state basically got up there and, like, in my opinion, was just like, whoa, hold on, we're going to peel apart this whole, you know, schizophrenia thing right here and make sure that everyone understands that, you know, this is not, you are not diagnosing him, if you, you know, looking at it this way, that that is not a thing, so on and so forth. And so then they kind of end it with, well, how much did you get paid for this? And he's like, I think it was like 4200 and maybe some change or something like that. Um, and he's basically like, you know, this goes to fund research. Like, I don't get this. It, this goes to my uh, whatever, his foundation or whatever it is. Um, it goes to fund research. It's not like it's going into his pocket, but nonetheless, it's funding research. And... Yeah, I mean, the guy sounds like an accomplished person, you know? I mean, I get it, you know, absolutely. And I have no doubt, and so here's the thing. You know, when you get, and this is where with court cases, when you go the, the ping pong game from the state to the defense, from the state to the defense. You know, I wish there was some way to just find, uh, basically, to where there was not a motivation to where each party could come and say, we're going to get this person to test this and just see what the results are. And we both agree on this person. They are not getting paid. You know what I'm saying? Like, all this stuff. And, I mean, I don't know. If this might be a thing. Y'all might be like, uh, Paul, that is a thing, and it's called this. If so, drop it like it's hot in the comments and let me know. Um, but I feel like you would get more of an authentic thing because with this, it's like this guy could be totally telling the truth, and all the state has to do is get up there and say, well, yeah, you got 4200 bucks. Of course, you're going to say that. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it is what it is. So... That's where, because he does sound like very accomplished and the things he's talking about, I mean, there's, the MRI shows, I mean, there was something that happened to his skull. I mean, he had, you know, damage done. And I have no doubt that that causes issues. You know, and talking about the, well, even out of the boxers, I mean, this. One thing that happens, too, that makes the paid-for testimony unbelievable is when they get so dramatic. Because according to this guy, I'm like, well, how did he function? How did he have motor skills? You know what I mean? Because it's just like, okay, well, even boxers didn't have this kind of hemorrhaging and this and that. And, you know, and again, it might be true. 
but it just sounds like way over the top, you know, and the fact that it's like, well, how did he go this long if he has this much brain damage with his job, you know, doing all these things, and it's like, you know, the brain is a very complex, tricky thing, and so he very well could have been, like, going along, but had this other thing going. So let's move on from the radiologist, uh, uh, testimony and I don't know the the psychiatrist's name I believe it started with a K and it was a very complicated last name so we're gonna call him Dr. K and his stuff again like because I mean first of all let's talk about how much he got paid $25,000 so far on that case I was like well slap me silly and sign me up can I be your assistant I'm just like 25 grand I'm just like, that is crazy. The state of South Carolina has paid this man $25,000. And he does say he diagnosed him with schizophrenia. He's like, plain and simple. We have brain damage. And, pardon me. And he's going into these details and stuff. <clears throat> pardon me. He said charges 400 bucks an hour. Um, You know. And so he's going into it. And so that is a little bit more, okay, you know, let's, let's, let's see what you have to say. Um, meaning because he's a psychiatrist. So this is the person that can sit here and do some diagnosing, you know, whereas the radiologist is very clear, like you can't diagnose this. So let's just move on from that. Um, and, and again, I'm not going to get into all the science, he, you know, technical terms about it, but you know, he's diagnosing him with this. He goes into the details of, well, you know, this is what can happen at, you know, a younger age, the, the um the a breakdown or an episode can take place and then these things happen later he goes into the aspect of the mother and how she had it and how this is very genetic and yada 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 and you know everyone it displays differently and presents itself differently in everybody and i have no doubt for that um and, and i see obviously where the defense is trying to go with this because that is a major thing like oh this guy has schizophrenia um and depending on what you know, if this guy was just, I mean, I do think there are people out there that have that, that could be way up here, that it's like they're, you know, they're not based in reality. Then I think there's people like Tim, where if he has this, I think he is based in reality a good deal. I, obviously, he has some mental things going on. Anyone that's going to kill their children does. Um... And some of the things that he comes out with, it's just, there's clearly that going on, but it comes down to right or wrong. And to me, the evidence shows, well, schizophrenic or not, he knows right from wrong. I mean, he says this, you know, over and over. Um, his behavior shows this. He knew what he was doing, and that's what it comes down to. I mean, I think very few people can get away. And there's some cases where I've seen people that I'm like, that's insanity, period. How did they not get that? Um... I think very few people ever can successfully land an insanity plea because I think very few people truly do these completely heinous things and are completely unaware of, you know what I mean, like, of what they're doing or whatever. So, and again, like with this guy, the $25,000 is just like, oh my gosh, it's hard to look away from that. Now, one thing I thought was interesting is how right from the gate they present the, um, how much are you going to pay for this? You know, they go ahead and just tackle that question. And he does say, you know, I've only I have a low amount of cases that I testify in because I, whatever my findings are, I'm not going to get up here and say, oh, well, I'm making this money, so I'm going to uh, tell you whatever you want to hear. He's like, whatever the findings are, whatever the findings are, and a lot of times it's not what people want to hear, and so they don't want me to testify. And that in itself is a whole other thing because of course they're not going to have somebody come testify. That do you think that they would pay somebody to get up there and um and be like, no, he's completely normal. He doesn't show any signs of any kind of you know mental illness or anything he's you know good to go <laughs> you know they're, of course they're not they're gonna get somebody up there that says this and so that's where you know you get into well who's selling what side better you know and again with this case uh, schizophrenic or not it, it's just he, to me he's presented that he knows right from wrong now i had a friend and she has since passed god bless um but she was diagnosed with schizophrenia. And I'm not trying to say before I say this, oh, I knew somebody one time, so I know everything about it. But I'm just looking at my own experience, the little bit of that I have of knowing someone personally with it. Um, and basically, now I was living away from the area. She was a high school friend of ours. 
And so I had long since moved away when this took place. So I talked to her on the phone a little bit, but I was never around her. But she was telling me, she's like, well, I got diagnosed with schizophrenia. It runs in her family. And she, and basically, and I don't remember how it was, but it was her mid twenties that the full diagnosis came. But she told me about some event that, you know, had happened. And it was in that age range that they talked about that 19 to 22. And so she's basically, she started having these kind of weird hallucinations <clears throat> pardon me and so talking to her on the phone because she basically was like i can't work at this point you know yada yada, yada i'm on medication and uh not long after that she died in a car wreck and uh, i was very sad because me goosebumps right now thinking about it um but it was very unfortunate but the times that i talked to her on the phone and stuff like that after that i mean and she would tell me of these things but she, there was this cognitive thing with her where she knew like this isn't normal if that makes sense. Like, because she wasn't, she knew what norm was for her. Um, and so, again, I'm not trying to sit here and say, oh, well, you know, just because I talked to somebody for, you know, no, not at all. But I just found it interesting because a lot of these things they were talking about, I recognized. I was like, well, yeah, she said that. And yeah, she said that. And yeah, that's when she was diagnosed. And yeah, she said she had that symptom. And, but she knew enough to know that's not normal. Like, you know, uh, the coffee cup shouldn't be having a conversation with me. You know what I mean? Type thing. Uh, that's, you know, abnormal. Uh, so, and therein to me lies, because, I mean, honestly, I just would never sit here and say, oh, yeah, she, you know, she slaughtered her family and that was because of that. I'm not trying to say there aren't people out there with that, that that's an excusable, you know, that, they were so far gone in the disease that they didn't know right from wrong or whatever. I'm sure that takes place. Um, but I just feel like, you know, I don't think that's the case with Mr. Jones. So that's it. Anyways, I don't want to make this another huge long video. Um, so anyways, I hope everybody's doing well. And again, drop your comments like they're hot down there in that comment section. And uh, any comments, please. Um, even if you have a different opinion, I love that. As long as everybody is friendly and nice, uh, absolutely. That's what we're here for. That's how we learn. That's how we grow as human beings is to hear different things. So anyways, uh, I love you guys. And we will continue watching the saga and reporting on it. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.